A species of pea plant can produce green or yellow peas. Figure 3.1 shows a photograph of a green pea and a yellow pea. So this pea is said to be green and the other one is said to be yellow. Now this is a particular species which uh, it produces two colors in short. You've got the the green pea and the yellow pea. So the pea which is green is known as PA and this one is called PB. So let's continue with the question. The color of peas is controlled by a single gene. The color of peas is controlled by a single gene. The allele for or allele for yellow peas is dominant and is represented by the letter uh, uppercase G and the allele for green peas is recessive and is represented by the letter lowercase g use your knowledge and this information to complete table 3.1 so this is table 3.1 that we have right here uh, says the genotype of pa so we have to write the genotype of pa in the phenotype of pb we have to write the phenotype of pb the phenotype of a pa with a heterozygous uh, genotype okay so this is the question so let's, uh, the first reading is just for us to get an understanding of what this question is all about. Then let's read to answer the question now. So it's very important to always read through your question three times. That's the technique I always use. So if you feel like you can read it twice, but three times would be enough for you to understand. The first time is just to read to get an idea. The second time you read to understand. The third time you read to answer. So a species of plant can produce green or yellow peas. Okay, so I think at this point we understand that... Uh, this can produce green and yellow peas and this is this is the diagram okay the color of peas is controlled by a single gene okay so now we know that genes store information these are just proteins we store information for a particular trait or particular characteristic of an organism now genes have got alternate versions they can uh they can they come in pairs one on each chromosome so the pairs or versions of genes are called alleles and we can we, we, we can have uh, uh, two alleles for, for, for a particular trait or a particular characteristic. So the allele for yellow pea is dominant. The allele for uh, yellow pea is dominant okay, and is represented by the letter uh, uppercase G. So alleles can be in different, uh, can be two uh, in, in, in two forms, it can be a dominant allele and a recessive allele. A dominant allele uh, is the one that will always show in the phenotype or will show in the organism whether in the phenotype of an organism, whether the organism is uh, homozygous or heterozygous. So maybe we'll mention about those terms. So to represent a dominant allele, we're going to write a uh, uppercase G and for the one which is recessive a lowercase G so this question is trying to get if you understand the difference between a dominant uh, LL and a recessive LL a dominant LL as we mentioned in class when discussing online tuitions we said that it's the one that will always show itself or it shows in the phenotype or in the physical when you say phenotype we're talking about the physical characteristic of an organism like with that like uh, eye color hair color height the things you can see that's the phenotype so a dominant gene will always show or in other words it will always express itself since it's, it's dominant it's a big guy in the room so to always show it always express itself in the press even whether uh the the other gene or the other allele is is recessive so the dominant will always show itself the allo for green pea is recessive by recessive we mean it's not very expressive it will only show or express itself in the uh, in the phenotype of an organism when it is homozygous meaning you have got g uh lowercase g and lowercase g since they the allos come as pairs they need to express itself if it comes with the one which is dominant then it will it will not express itself unless if they are just homozygous so this is known as a homozygous situation and this is 
a heterozygous so the organism is for this one is heterozygous and it's heterozygous for this particular gene this is known as heterozygous here and then this is known as homozygous all right so this is the whole idea here so a homozygous uh this this uh Organism is homo homozygous for this uh, for this particular gene, and this is heterozygous. So they are saying the yellow P is dominant, and the the allele for yellow P is, is dominant. So G here stands for yellow, and yellow is dominant, and then the allele for green P is recessive and is represented by the letter G. So what would be the genotype of uh, PA? So what is PA? So PA is green in appearance. So that could only happen if this gene, this uh, the, the genotype for this right here is a homozygous recessive, homozygous recessive for the for this gene. So that will be the only way that this will be green. So right here, this we would put uh, the genotype of this one is a lowercase g and lowercase g. Now, when you say genotype, we are talking about the genetic makeup, like the actual genes, what's 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 present uh, in the uh, the genetic makeup is gg. The phenotype. When you talk about the phenotype, we are actually talking about the physical characteristic that of that organism that we can mostly see with our eyes and maybe uh, the physical ones we can touch. So those, uh, the genotype is actually the genes in the cells, the genetic makeup. So the genetic makeup of PA is lowercase g and lowercase g because that's the only way that this is going to have the color green is when it has got two uh recessive alleles which is a lowercase g and a lowercase g if you introduce an uppercase g it means that this g will take over and the g comes with it the yellow color hence it, this p will not be uh green rather it will be yellow so that is it the phenotype of pb pb is um we're talking about the physical characteristic of uh of pb so right here the the fancy thing here is they want you to know whether you understand the term phenotype which is the physical characteristic of pb so this would be the easiest because i already tell you that pb is yellow so this is a physical characteristic that it's it's, it's yellow so the answer right here will be yellow it will be yellow that would be the phenotype the phenotype of a p with a heterozygous uh, genotype so a heterozygous genotype could be a uh, dominant allele which is for yellow and uh, a recessive for green okay so this is heterozygous meaning they are not coding for the same characteristic they are coding for different characteristics this one is coding for green this uh, this, this one is coding for yellow this one is coding for green so they are called heterozygous if they are coding if you put g and g this one is coding for green this one's for green so they are called homo like one homozygous if like this like this like it's just one is again homo because they are coding for the same characteristic but here they are coding for different characteristics so a phenotype of a p with a heterozygous genotype meaning it should, the genotype will be like this so the phenotype will be uh, because G is present and remember we said G is dominant meaning he's a big guy he always express himself that's how at least how I think of it and you always show so G codes for yellow so the characteristic or the phenotype will be yellow so that is it and this is what we are going to have so these are the answers gg uh yellow yellow so two p plants were crossed complete the genetic diagram in figure 3.2 to show the outcome of the cross so the genetic diagram can be used to predict the genetic uh genotype or the phenotype of the offsprings so if this was this was the parental gametes 
uh, part four, parent number one, and then this for the parental gametes, let's say parent number two. So we can see that parent number two here is heterozygous uh, dominant, meaning he's got a dominant allele uh, here and a recessive one. And the parental gametes right here, it's got uh, two recessive ones for parental one. And then we can see that uh, this this means that this parent here is uh, has got the phenotype or the color is is green because we said in the previous that the the allele for green pea is recessive okay which is uh, this one the lower case g and the allele for yellow pea is dominant which is the upper case upper case g there so this the phenotype the physical characteristic we can see for parent one that this one is green and then for parent two since it's got the G, which is for yellow, so this one is actually yellow. So this G here uh, is for, anyway, we'll just use another G here. So this is yellow. So we can see that uh, when they cross, this G, uh, this allele, which is dominant, uh, since they come as pairs, they will, they will be sorted together. So this will come here, and then this as well, and this, They'll be sorted together okay and this small one and that small one they'll also be sorted together and that one and that one they'll also be sorted together so we can see that uh, right here we've got two which are heterozygous dominant and two which are um, homozygous recessive now what are the phenotype the phenotype is that these are going these two are going to be yellow since g codes for yellow and then these two are going to be uh, green since they are homozygous for g which codes for green and the ratio of the yellow offspring to the green offspring we have got so this one to be green will be yellow and this one yellow so there are two yellow uh, yellow offsprings and then this will be green, this one will be green, two green offsprings. So the ratio will be one to one. Cystic fibrosis is a disease caused by a recessive uh, LL in humans. Okay, it's caused by a recessive. So you have to take that word there, recessive LL, you have to mark it in humans so it means it's the, the, the allows recessive it's not always shows itself in heterozygous situation only in homozygous situation so figure 3.3 is a pedigree diagram showing the inheritance of cystic fibrosis in a family okay so we've got r and s that together these are these are parents and then they uh they they cross they have children so these are offsprings so we've got one two three four of them t u v w they say they're their names so female without cystic fibrosis, that is, the, we have a key here. It shows this as the female without cystic fibrosis. So the shaded ones have got cystic fibrosis. So the ones with, with are not shaded do not have cystic fibrosis. Okay, so state the number of people that have cystic fibrosis. So that would be very easy. It'd be just like you know, the ones which are shaded. So these two, they do not, uh, they, 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 do have cystic fibrosis okay and the next question number two says identify the letter of a person that must have a heterozygous genotype identify the letter of a person that must have a heterozygous genotype so the one that might must have heterozygous genotype is the one that looks normal but at the end ends up passing uh, or producing an offspring who is sick and who's that guy these two guys right here, they look normal, they are normal, but the, their offsprings are kind of, uh, they, they have cystic fibrosis. So one of them or both of them should have, uh, should have a heterozygous genotype. So you can pick either R has a heterozygous genotype or S has a heterozygous genotype because they produce offspring despite looking normal. The, maybe in their genes they 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 are not homo they're not uh homozygous dominant they are heterozygous dominant and hence they produce one one or two or fifty or fifty percent of the kids have got um or offspring let me use the word have got uh, cystic fibrosis so we can say uh either r or s 
or we can, you can pick one R or S. Person U has a homozygous dominant genotype. So is person U. So this is person U has got homo, homozygous genotype. Okay. Second, the probability of person U having ha, having a child with cystic fibrosis. So again, these two have got well, a child with cystic fibrosis because we said they are heterozygous dominant. So if you are homozygous dominant, it means you are a pure, pure, pure breed. Okay, you're a pure breed, so you cannot in any way produce a child who's got uh, uh, cystic fibrosis. So the probability of that happening is probably uh, is probably zero because there's no way that you can produce if you're a pure breed there's no way that you can produce someone who has got cystic fibrosis your homozygous dominant will be dominant all the way but there could be a chance that one of your offsprings could actually now become heterozygous heterozygous uh, dominant and they could one of your grandchildren could actually have cystic fibrosis okay so this is so this is the end of question question three on genetics and we'll see you in the next video.